fall down when you're mine I get up and you're a stranger Out of sight, out of mind Tea time, guys. We have made it to day five post-surgery, and I have made it up the stairs all by myself because I was in desperate need of some caffeine. So we are making some English breakfast tea. A close competitor for first place on my favorites list between English and Irish breakfast tea. Just don't fall over, Joe. Catching fire before it ever To all my tea drinkers out there, are you guys milk and sugar in your tea people or are you purists? Today is a milk and sugar kind of day. So, as I am allowing my tea to steep, I thought I would talk about something that I realized I have completely neglected to address, and I have a prop, which I think you guys might find interesting. Why was there a screw in my amputated leg, or the part of my leg that was still attached to my body, so like my residual limb, my stump? I talked in my surgery video, which I will link above and below, about how they were able to remove the screw. I was really happy because there was risk that it might start unscrewing itself, so on and so forth, but if they're just chopping off a limb, where would a screw go? Like, why would you even need a screw? So let's talk about that. Comforting and warm tea check. So let's talk about why there was a screw through my leg. I'll pop an x-ray up on the screen. So this was taken uh, maybe a month and a half ago. Why was there a screw through my leg? This is not common for all below knee amputees. And I don't know that this ever happens for above knee amputees. I feel like the last five months have definitely been an education. And one of the things that I learned is that not all amputations are created equal. And I mean that also in that, you know, it's gonna be different for every person and what is right is going to be different for every person, but there are different kinds of procedures. Different ways legs can be amputated and different body parts can be amputated. So in my case, the kind of procedure that was used, the amputation technique that was used was called an ERTL, E-R-T-L. Quick side note, because I realized I just did that on camera, I have a weird tick in that I will often finger spell things randomly, usually to myself. I learned um, the American Sign Language alphabet when I was a kid, and so I think it's almost like a, it's like an unconscious thing. I will like, if I'm saying er ERTL, like E-R-T-L, I will, my hands will just do things. Anyways, moving on. So this particular technique can be done actually a variety of ways. So basically what happens in this particular technique is they will take a piece of bone from whatever part of your leg they've chopped off and they will put it on its side and screw it in between your tibia and your fibula. So it looks like this. I hope I did that right on screen. Essentially, it creates a bone bridge. They don't always use a screw. Sometimes I believe that they can use stitching. I don't know how you stitch bones together, honestly. I believe that that was the original technique used. I know that it's generally um, like better long-term if you don't use a screw. However, I do not know how you get bones to fuse together without a screw. So it's very common practice to actually use a screw. My surgeon used a screw. That's right, this screw was inside my body. I can't lie to you guys, it actually wasn't. This is a wood screw that I found in my garage. If I was a screw, where would I be? I and semi-organized the garage and now I can't find anything. <gasps> Success! Da! I tried, I tried really hard to get the screw back from my body. And by tried really hard, I mean I called the, the hospital after the fact, like two days after surgery, cause I was like, I need that back. Like, I really want that back. I could make something cool. Like, I could make a bracelet or a necklace or something neat and slightly morbid but cool out of it and I could show you guys. Yeah, that was a, that was a really late afterthought and I called the surgeon on call and he was like, yeah, it's against hospital policy. We couldn't do that anyways, even if we still had it and I got really sad. So this is just a, uh, this is just a, a fake prop representation of what was in my life. So actually, it is probably a fairly accurate uh, representation. Lame, I know. So there was a screw in my leg so that bone bridge would fuse. That bone bridge makes it so that my amputation is a lot stronger. Otherwise, you kind of have, um, I guess you could say chopsticks coming down, like both, both your bones, your tibia and your fibula are coming down and they just end 
that's okay too. That definitely works. That's been a technique that has been used on many people for, I mean, I guess centuries probably. But because I'm younger, because I'm active, this definitely provides a lot more stability. Someone else actually asked about this general concept in the comment section a couple days ago about like, why can't they just make something permanent, like screw something into your bones and then make it come out? And they actually have that. They have a procedure called osteointegration where essentially they put a rod into your actual bone and it comes out of your skin and then will attach to basically a permanent prosthetic. That is not commonly practiced yet. And I was literally about to tell you, I don't know that it happens with baloney amputees, but then I was like, Joe, do some research first. And it does actually. It looks really interesting for baloney amputees. Check this out. It is more common in other countries. And I think Australia does have kind of the leading centers for this stuff. So a fellow YouTuber actually did have osteo integration done. I watched her videos before I ever had my amputation. Her name is Ashton Murdoch. I will link her videos down below. And she had to go overseas to Australia to have this procedure done. There are definitely risks with it. I think there is a little ways for it to come for, to, to be more commonly practiced, but it's super promising. I think it's a really cool idea and I would love to see it more commonly practiced if it's a, if it's a safe thing to do. It's like super interesting isn't it? It's kind of, it feels like, kind of looks like the future, doesn't it? It'd be a lot faster to put on and take off prosthetics if you just like clipped it in to yourself rather than having to go through the kit and caboodle that we have to go through to put on prosthetics the other way. Some of the reasons why osteointegration is not more commonly practiced are definitely the risks. Infection risk is really high because it's literally like coming out of your skin. It's out of your bone and then out of your skin. So you can understand where there are risks with that. Skin breakdown is a serious concern and breakage of internal and external parts due to how the, the pressure loading of everything. So I think there is more research to be done, but it definitely works for some people. So there are a lot of different techniques that can be used depending on what kind of amputee you are, depending on what your lifestyle is and, and where in the world you are. But the kind of procedure I had was an Ertl procedure. Whenever I say that, I think I'm saying turtle, weirdly. So that is why I had not this screw, but a very similar screw through my leg. Unfortunately, one of the big problems with actually keeping this in, though it does provide stability, is that it starts like unscrewing itself in your leg, which you can understand is really painful. And then you actually have to have surgery again to have that taken out, which is why I begged my doctor, like, please, for the love of God, if it is safe, just take it out now so we can avoid surgery in the future. A friend of mine had surgery with the same surgeon actually and ended up having her screw back out. I think it was about a year or a year and a half after her amputation. And so I, I really wanted to avoid that happening. So I was incredibly grateful that he could just get it Done. All in one fell swoop. Also want to let you guys know my leg continues to heal really well. I am feeling much better on day, I think it's five today, than I did even yesterday. So strength is coming back, everything's going wonderfully, and I super appreciate you guys being here and following my journey. Anyway, random question of the day for you guys. If you, if you had surgery and had hardware taken out, would you want it back? Um, Cause I really did. I was bummed that I couldn't get it back. And I've also had screws back before. When I had all my ankle surgeries, I had lots of screws in there. A big old plate and I got those back because it was through a different hospital system and it was also years ago. And I kept those for a very long time until I lost them in a house fire, which was a bummer. So what about you guys? Would you want them back if you had surgery and had hardware removed? And with that, I bid you adieu for today and bye to this screw, which is actually a wood screw that we used to fix our fence when it fell over in a windstorm not that long ago. I love you guys. I'm thinking about you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys. Have you heard from the sky? Told them about it down the river.